The Buddha gives an analogy for the relationship between virtue and discernment. And by discernment here he means both concentration and discernment. In other words, the meditation. This is like two hands washing each other. The left hand washes the right hand. The right hand washes the left. That way they both get clean. So how does virtue clean your meditation? It gets you thinking in a perspective that's larger than just you. You think about the results of your actions, how they're going to impact other people. It gets you outside of your immediate desires. You start thinking about the long term. And realizing there's certain desires you have in the present moment that you're going to have to say no to if you want long term happiness. And that requires that you learn how to talk to yourself. Because there'll be a lot of things you want to say and do that, that'll go against the precepts. And you have to say no, and no in a way that sticks, and no in a way that you can live with. That requires that you start thinking outside of just the immediate you, me. It requires that you develop thoughts of compassion, goodwill. You take a larger perspective. You start thinking about all of the other beings out there in the world, all the suffering that they go through. And regardless of whether the people you like or don't like, they're suffering. And as you think of the suffering of others, it makes your own suffering a lot easier to live with. If it's just you suffering, it seems like everybody else is fine. The mind can get into all kinds of strange monologues about what's wrong, and often make the situation worse. But as you stick with the precepts and learn how to live with them comfortably, you have to change the way you talk to yourself. So instead of magnifying the difficulties, you magnify the good results, the good things about developing virtue, which is why it's only when virtue is totally perfected that you don't have to create a sense of self around it. The person who's gone beyond the fetter of grasping at virtue is someone who is still virtuous, but is not made of virtue, as the Buddha said. In other words, it doesn't create an identity around that, which means that up to that point you will be doing that, and you have to do it. Your identity as a virtuous person is kind of a redefining of yourself. And also changes your relationship to your past. When you think of things you did in the past that went against the precepts and that were harmful, you can tell yourself, well, that was me before I took on the precepts. Now that you've made the determination to restrain yourself and develop goodwill, you've done the best that a human being can do in the face of a memory of past mistakes. So you don't go around dwelling on them. When you don't dwell on your own past mistakes, it makes it a lot easier not to dwell on the misbehavior of other people. Because there's that reaction sometimes. You start thinking about the things you do wrong. It's an uncomfortable thought. 
You say, well, other people did these things wrong, and you can start really elaborating on that topic. You go from past wrongs to present wrongs. And your inner conversation just gets more and more unskillful, more and more oppressive. So if you can tell yourself you made a break with past, past wrongs, you can start forgiving other people too. And this will help the mind settle down. By taking this larger perspective, it's not just you, it's the whole human race, it's the whole realm of beings that becomes your frame of reference. In the practice of mindfulness, this is called being aware of body or feelings or mind or mind states in and of themselves externally. In other words, you see yourself suffering, well, remember other people are suffering too. You see yourself having unskillful mind states, well, other people do. That makes it easier to live with your mistakes and to move on. Think of the Buddha on the night of his awakening. He started out with his memories of past lives. And he had lots of past lives to remember. You can imagine all kinds of issues that came up. Part of the memory was the pleasures and pains he had felt for each of those lives. And if he had stopped there, he could have been pretty miserable. But he moved on to the second knowledge on that night, and that was the knowledge of all beings arising and passing away all over the universe, in line with their karma. In fact, it was seeing the large picture that he was able to see the relationship between karma and where they went after they passed away. And it was only by taking that larger frame of reference and being able to see that pattern that he was able to come back to the present moment. and look for that pattern as it was acting out in the present moment. How intentions and desires led to pleasure or pain, based on the views that motivated them. And then the question was, what kind of views could get you out? That's how we came across the Four Noble Truths. Notice that pattern of coming into the present moment, not straight from his own personal memories, his own personal narratives. He detoured. And you're taking the whole world into consideration. And so the practice of virtue is meant to do just that, get you out of your ordinary conversations in the mind about what you want to do, what you don't want to do, what you'd like to do, what your problems are. How you've been victimized by other people. Take it into a larger perspective. And your own personal narrative, it gets smaller. And as your personal narrative gets smaller, then you're ready to come into the present moment. So the practice of virtue helps there. You start thinking about your actions and their impact on others. You have to learn how to be very meticulous, because others include little tiny insects as well as larger beings. And little tiny lies and little tiny ways of being harmful here or there. You have to say no. I'm going to be comprehensive in this practice. This too becomes a good habit to take into the meditation, because little tiny voices come into the mind. And if you don't shake them out, in other words, reveal them to yourself, say, this is a voice in the mind, but I'm not going to identify with it, let it go. They're going to grow and take over.
So virtue gives you both a larger perspective and a more minute focus. You're coming at the focus from the larger perspective. And both of those attitudes are going to be really helpful as you meditate, both for the sake of the concentration and for the sake of discernment. In terms of concentration, as John Lee talks about how you want to get rid of the I must get rid of the hindrances while they're small. In comparison to hanging out a say a sheet on a clothesline. And then going over the sheet very carefully, make sure there are no little tiny insects on there. I had this experience looking after John Furong when he was sick. He had psoriasis. And they had these little tiny, tiny ants in Thailand that bite. And one of the things they're attracted to is the smell of somebody with psoriasis, we found out. So he had to keep changing his bedding, hanging it out, and then going over very meticulously to make sure there were no little tiny ants there, because just one little ant could, could disturb him. So this kind of meticulous attention to detail is going to be helpful both for your virtue and for your concentration, and then again for your discernment, to see what's going on in the mind. the little ways that the mind talks to itself, that sneak in and then make you miserable. You can see where they come from, because you can detect them very early on. Then, of course, as you develop these habits with the concentration and the discernment, then you turn around and you apply it to your virtue, get more meticulous. But you also see that the the rules are not confining, they're actually liberating, because they liberate you from all the voices in the mind that are going to harm you. And so you come at the practice of virtue, not so much with feeling like you've been put in a straitjacket, but that you've been released. So virtue cleanses your discernment, your discernment cleanses your virtue. And it's when they're cleansed that they can lead to release, in the larger sense. Where you reach the point where you've given up harmful activity, both inside and out, for good. <coughs> 